Awesome. Uh, so before I get started, I just want to say uh, thank you to, to Eliza and at Tech Systems, Bill Gloff, the organizer, um, the one and only Bill Gloff, um, Geraldo for his talk on Lex, um, Alex uh, on his talk on, on Monorepos, um, and, uh, and unfortunately, June, his, his beautiful talk about Firebase, and, um, and now I'm here, I'm, I'm telling you uh, to tell Firebase to, to go fly a kite. And so, June, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, That's all right. Sorry about that. It was fun. <laughs> um, uh, so, I, I want to start off um, by just kind of addressing the, the elephant in the room. And, and so, um, and the, that elephant is that, that June, he, he talked about the, you know, how great Firebase is. And, and it is, it really is. And, and um, this title is more about uh, my weakness for pizzazz, if you will, than, than anything else. Um, but I would like to, to share my thoughts about why I think uh, um, Firebase is not, not always the best choice. And, and I, I'm really excited to talk about um, how we leverage uh, a technology called Fauna DB. Um, which is a, a similar to, to Firebase. It is a, a database as a service. Um, it's accessible. It has a direct integration with, uh, with static site hosting providers like Netlify and Vercel, which used to be uh, Zytes or, or now. Um, and, um, and, and kind of look at like the, the, the different set of, of benefits to you as, as an engineer. Um, so, that being said, I'm I, my name is Brett Haymaker. I'm I'm a UI engineer uh, in the fintech uh, industry here in in Chicago. Uh, I'm also an instructor at General Assembly. Um, I teach uh, front end web development and uh, React courses online. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's 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 get into it. Um, so let's let's go tell Firebase to to go fly a kite. That's supposed to be like really. Uh, Really cutting. Um, so take that, Firebase. Um, so first of all, I am not an expert in 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 serverless uh, architectures. Uh, I am just starting to to learn about this myself, and kind of this talk was like an excuse for me to to learn uh, about these technologies as well. Uh, everything that we can do uh, today, um, or that we're going to be talking about uh, for the next fifteen minutes. Uh, most of it is is you, you can do it in Firebase as well, right? You can create your own cloud functions in, in Firebase. Um, what you can do, though, in uh, using FaunaDB and Netlify uh, that you can't do, and you probably will never be able to do in Firebase, is you can save arrays. Yes, you can, June. Take take that. Uh, <laughs> um, but I just want to make sure that that you all know that I am I am a beginner uh, at this as well, and I, I definitely want to be transparent about that. Uh, I also think it's a great idea to start a talk saying what you what you are not. Uh, so that's that's also a thing. Um, so so really uh, the underlying the underlying question uh, of this talk is as a front end developer uh, using React, uh, or if I'm using Vue, or if I'm just using vanilla JavaScript, it really shouldn't matter, right? The point is, is how do I quickly add uh, persistence services or, or uh, some sort of persistence layer to my front end application? And the answer to that uh, typically has, has been um, uh, Firebase, right? It's, it's a very, very uh, well-built, uh, solution. Their real-time database is like it's it's off the charts amazing. It's like it, it feels like magic. It's so good, right? Um, and and I think my my the this dichotomy of of uh, Firebase versus uh, um, using Fauna DB and and serverless functions it's kind of a false dichotomy um, because they're they're both database as a service platforms. Uh, they're both document based, right? Um, but I think my my uh, animus towards Firebase as a solution uh, it stems from my experience teaching it to students who are learning React in, in my React course. And, and to qualify uh, what I'm saying is that Firebase is, is it's so frequently used to teach uh, young developers or, or sprouting developers or developing developers, um, developing developers, good one. Um, 
to uh, to add persistence to their applications. Uh, it's it's commonly referenced in uh, in tutorials and in, in blog posts um, as a way to 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 save data, right? And uh, I think for new students, this is like uh, a, a really great thing uh, because uh, of everything that June mentioned, right? Like there's there's a, a ton of documentation, there's um, back overflow uh, questions that are, are being addressed. Uh, there's a community. Um, it's supported by a large, a large tech company, right? Um, those are all really great things. Um, but what I, what I, and it, it also it empowers a new student uh, or or someone who is transitioning into this career uh, to get a fairly instant sense of gratification and, and and verification of using such a tool. What I find though, however, is, uh, and this is uh, my my professional experience. Uh, that I'm speaking from uh, is that that becomes uh, fairly quickly um, what what I refer to as the honeypot. So, um, and what I mean by that is, um, for for a new student, they 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 kind of get the lay the land of, of Firebase, and um, they find that it's 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 quick, it's it's relatively easy, right? Like I can I can add things to my app really 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 quickly and easily, and it gives me all these things. And um, but but after a while, you know, it, it's you know initially it's like oh this is so sweet and and it's golden and uh, probably warm and uh, and sticky, right? But then like you realize after a while like you're you're stuck, uh, you're trapped actually. Um, and so, uh, and, and what I mean by your trap is that um, Firebase, or rather the knowledge of Firebase implementation, in, in again, in my professional experience, is not something that employers typically look for. It's not, it's, it, I think it's very difficult, at least in my experience, to translate your experience using Firebase as your, your back end as a service to something that uh, it, it, something uh, that an employer is already using, um, or, or another skill set that might be in demand. That might be that one word that um, that that gets your resume through through the door, right? Uh, that that Firebase might doesn't necessarily hold the weight. Now, I could be completely wrong about this. If you're if you're an independent app developer uh, creating uh, mobile apps, um, this experience is probably the inverse, right? Like Firebase is probably a very very common solution. Um, uh, to to provide that that sort of um, persistence layer, um, but in my 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 experience and the experience of of students that I, I have had, um, uh, it doesn't seem like Firebase really helps them get in the door, uh, and so that's kind of what I'm uh, I'm also coming from that 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 place. Um, so uh, so that's why I think Firebase in some place in some sense is is, is a honeypot. Uh, and that's where we get to to, to Fauna on a DP. Um, and, and really the, the value that I think uh, is, is embedded in, in learning Fauna DB and um, uh, in becoming associated with uh, or leveraging Fauna DB for your project over Firebase, for example, is um, that, that Fauna DB has first class GraphQL support. And GraphQL is is something that is very much of value uh, right now on the market, uh, and, and knowledge of GraphQL is, is incredibly valuable. Um, so while you don't have to use GraphQL to use SpawnaDB, um, it's it's certainly something that you can opt into and 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 take advantage of uh, down the road. So um, it, it, it's a single solution that comes with first class GraphQL support. Um, the second option is that the major uh, static site providers. So if you're using the Jamstack, for example, um, and, and you're leveraging a static site hosting platform like Netlify or, or Vercel, uh, FaunaDB has direct uh, integration or add-ons uh, for uh, for that platform. And those platforms. Today we're specifically focusing on on Netlify, but uh, it, this is also available in in Vercel. Um, I also think it's a it's an it's a value add. Uh, to to anyone who hasn't had exposure to leveraging uh, serverless functions uh, before, so it's a point of entry for for you folks. Um, and and this is not necessarily a FaunaDB thing. This is more so 
leveraging SaunaDB via serverless functions um, uh, through the Netlify uh, static site hosting platform, right? So, so Netlify um, allows you to create serverless functions and they, they build them and they host them, right? But it's basically just porting them into AWS Lambda. Um, so it's, it's a, um, if, if you haven't worked with serverless functions before, it serves as that like initial experience that kind of gets your feet wet and then you can go on and do a lot more advanced stuff. Uh, okay, so uh, enough enough with the context here. Let's 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 dig in, um, and uh, let's talk about like okay, how how do I how do I get started here? Um, so the very very first thing that you'll you'll need to do uh, if you don't already have uh, a Netlify account, um, uh, you know go go to Netlify. I encourage you to go to Netlify first. Uh, sign up. Um, they have a direct to GitHub uh, integration. Um, so uh, what that means is that it, uh, anytime you push code to your GitHub repository, um, you can have Netlify listen for that push and it'll automatically build your application and deploy it on Netlify um, uh, kind of every, with, every, with every push and it, and it can be branch specific as well, uh, which is really great. The second step is, is signing up and registering for a, a FaunaDB account. Um, and uh, if you've signed up for Netlify already um, and you haven't signed up for FaunaDB, um, when you go to, to sign up, there's a Netlify OAuth option, which makes it really, really easy because then they both know about each other uh, instantly. And, and you can just kind of click that and, and you're all set. Um, so after that, so uh, you want to create a brand new React app. You have a React app that you want to, to start leveraging this stuff in. It doesn't really matter. Um, the, the other things, the, the two other things that you need to get started uh, immediately uh, using um, uh, Netlify serverless functions and, and FaunaDB specifically is to install uh, the FaunaDB JavaScript SDK, um, which is just a, the FaunaDB, the, and that, that's a direct dependency. And then you also need to uh, install, and I, and they, 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 in the docs, they will ask you to install this as a, as a global NPM package, but that's now considered a bit of an anti-pattern. Um, so it, it install the Netlify CLI as a, as a dev dependency, and then you can use NPX to, to reference uh, any commands you have after that. Um, okay, cool. And then, so the, after you've done these things, right, so you've installed FaunaDB, Installed the Netlify CLI. Uh, the very, very next thing you can do is execute this command in the root of your project. Um, it, it's the, the Netlify init thing. So what this is doing is this is basically it's going to create a, a dot Netlify directory in your project, and inside that is just going to be a little bit of JSON. Uh, I think it's uh, called state.json, and that is just going to hold a simple uh, site ID reference to uh, the site that has been initialized on Netlify with your repository. So this basically makes sure that Netlify in, in, in remote land and your local project kind of know about each other. Um, and that's really all it's doing. So uh, um, that, that's really it. If, if the Netlify CLI, it, it might at this step uh, require you to, to authenticate or log in. If you aren't already logged in in, uh, in your local system with the Netlify CLI, this is likely going to redirect you to Netlify and say like, yes, uh, this is me, and then it'll just kind of take care of itself. Um, if you have to explicitly log in, there's a Netlify uh, login command that you can, uh, you can use to be explicit about that. Um, secondly, um, something that we have the option of doing, we don't need this per se, but um, it's it's good that we that we that we that we leverage it is uh, is a is a toml file. So in our project at the root, we can create a, a Netlify uh, toml uh, file, and this is basically just like if you've used um, uh, uh, Jenkins or uh, uh, Bitbucket pipelines or uh, GitHub Pages, and and it had some sort of automation uh, build script or something. Um, this is basically just a config file for Netlify. Um, for its, its build and deployment cycle. Um, and uh, when, you're, when you're leveraging uh, Netlify's serverless functions uh, integration and, um, 
uh, and this is this is kind of agnostic of, of using Fauna DB. Um, you you want to do two things, um, or at least at least one thing, uh, if you're using functions, and that's to tell Netlify where to expect uh, the functions uh, to exist. So you're basically telling them what folder the, you, they they will be able to, be able to find your your function files, uh, and you also want to provide the command that Netlify should run in order to build your app. Um, and then also once it's built, where that build is located. So the publish equals build, that's uh, when you run the build command, it'll create a build directory and all your build files will be in the, inside of that. The, the second part of, of the Netlify TOML uh, configuration file um, uh, with, uh, of dev, right, that's, that's really gonna be used by this package that kind of comes with Netlify CLI called Netlify dev. Um, now, Netlify Dev is in beta, um, so it's it's actually very very new. Uh, probably it's probably going to change, but it's actually really powerful and really exciting what they what they've been doing with this. Um, and basically, what what it does is it um, it will um, it it will replace your normal start command uh, with an npm. Uh, you can still run npm run start, and you'll see that we replaced it earlier, but it will use Netlify Dev to spin up two servers, one to serve your app, and the second to serve your functions, your serverless functions on their own server. So your app will behave exactly the way it will locally as it would be when it's deployed on, on Netlify, which is really, really great to like test uh, your, your, how, how deeply coupled or how deeply integrated your, your serverless functions are to your application. Um, so, in, in our package JSON, right, to make that uh, transition, uh, we would simply replace the start script. Um, instead of saying React script start, right, if we're using a CRA uh, template, um, now we're going to reference Netlify, the, the Netlify CLI, and we're going to reference that dev command that we just built in, in Netlify uh, TOML at the bottom there. Okay. Um, now, uh, now, we're, now, we're, now we're rolling. Like, we're, almost, we're almost there, right? So uh, the next step is to create a, a, a Fauna DB instance, a database instance. There are three ways, three main ways to do that. Um, when I log into the Fauna DB uh, uh, web app, their, their, their website, um, they have a thing called the Fauna DB console. And that's basically like your Firebase dashboard, right? Like you can create new databases, you can uh, you know, configure options, do all those things, right? Uh, and, and you can totally do that uh, in this way. Uh, we will not be doing that today. I will not be showing you how to do that because it's very self-explanatory. The, the second way that you can do that is you can install a CLI specifically for Fauna called Fauna Shell, and you can initialize a, a database instance in this way. However, we are going to be leveraging, since we want and care about deploying this application to Netlify, we are going to be using the Fauna uh, add-on for Netlify. And um, that, that's what this looks like. So, so uh, when we, uh, and, and I want to qualify what, what these two commands are doing. Um, so, um, right. So, uh, hold on. I'm not, my, I swear to God, my, my audio is still working. I'm just, I, I skipped over some things and now I'm disappointed in myself. And so I'm just having a moment. Um, so, um, cool. So the first command, the, the create fauna command, um, what that does locally is it, it will uh, generate a local fauna DB instance and it will generate a, a random name for that instance, right? It will also generate uh, three uh, keys and three secrets for those for those keys, um, and and that's all it will do, and it, and that will just sit locally uh, in, in your project, and and Netlify won't necessarily know about it. Um, the second command, uh, uh, mtx Netlify add-ons off Fauna, um, that second command automatically redirects you to your Fauna DB uh, um, account. And it will ask you, hey, this, this local instance of this database um, uh, that, that Netlify knows about, 
do you want to associate with your fauna DB account? Basically, you take ownership of that local instance. It now is, it becomes yours. Uh, and, and at that point, you can rename it if, if, you, if you wish. Um, and let me see if I have, yeah, so, so when, when you are redirected, you'll, you'll be uh, presented with a screen that looks a lot like this. Um, you know, the, the database name, it's, it's completely randomly generated, so it's going to look different. But here's, it gives you the opportunity to rename uh, that database. Um, you're, you're then going to um, go into your, your FaunaDB console, and um, what you need to do is, uh, so DB Overview will show you, like, the collections or the indexes or whatever, but you, you want to go down to the Security tab, and here you want to generate a new key. You'll see three keys already that, that the Netlify uh, CLI has generated for you. However, uh, our Netlify deployment still does not know or is aware of those secrets. So we need to generate one specifically to make that link for uh, at least for local development. So we're going we're gonna to generate a, a new key. And when you do, you'll see something like this. And this is the only time that you'll ever see your key secret. And, and feel free to, to use this or abuse this however, however much you want. I don't care because it doesn't exist anymore. So uh, feel free to use this key. Um, but this is what you'll see. So, so make sure that you save this uh, and, and, and safeguard it somewhere uh, until you can add it to your Netlify account. Okay? Um, so the, so you, you, you get your key. Uh, make sure that you, you, you specify the role as admin. So that'll give you all the rights to, to this database to do anything that you want. Um, and uh, you're going to take that key, and then you're going to go into uh, your Netlify dashboard. Right? You're going you're to identify the, the build that is associated with your local project. And uh, in, in the, the, the Netlify options, you have the ability to add environment variables. So you're just going to add this key here. And it's, it, the FaunaDB convention is FaunaDB server secret, right? Um, and that's, that's in their docs, but it's also here for, for you to reference. So you're going to add that variable, you're going to save it. And now here's where things get, get really, really cool. Um, I don't want to talk about that quite yet. So uh, where is it? Here's the, here's the thing. So I, I want to talk about this. So once, once you've done that, right, uh, you go back to your project. And it, you're, you're going to run a command called npm run start. That's going to start your, your web application, right? But because what we have done is we've kind of hijacked that start command to leverage the Netlify CLI, um, it's going to run our app. But I don't know if you can see this. It, it's, also, it's also showing you a, a function server is listening on port 65010. So it's, it's spun up a parallel web server to serve whatever uh, serverless functions uh, we create in our project. That port number is, is, is important. And you can also see that it injects uh, the environment variables into our local project, but it's actually pulling the secret here now from our Netlify account in production. So it is going and grabbing and pulling it. So we don't have to manually set environment variables uh, to develop locally, it's, it's going to automatically pull what, what is in uh, our Netlify account uh, to our local development environment, which is really, really awesome. We don't have to, like, go into a bash session and, and arbitrarily set uh, an environment variable. Um, so uh, you're going to run your server, right, after you've created the, the database and you've given Netlify the secret uh, key um, for, for that database instance. Um, and then you're, you're finally ready to, uh, to create a, uh, or, or to start using your database. Now, in, in the Netlify project, and I'll share this, this link uh, with, with the group, uh, there's a starter kit for, uh, for Netlify Fauna uh, DB uh, integration that Netlify released. It's a really, really great project. And in that project, they have a script called Bootstrap. Um, and this is a copy. So everything that in here is just a copy of that script. Um, it's basically I, it's, it's basically establishing a connection to um, to your uh, your FaunaDB uh, server, right? It's determining if you're actually inside of the Netlify context or if you're local. So if you are in, inside Netlify, it's like cool. I don't need to worry about this. 
but if you're local, it will actually ensure that not not that, that the database is created, but that the schema that you want to apply to that database. So what collections do you want? Do you want uh, to have indices on, on this database or in that collection? Uh, all those all those choices, right? Um, uh, that hasn't yet been applied. It's just an, an empty database instance. Uh, there's no, if you're thinking about it in SQL, there's no columns, no rows, no nothing, right? Um, so what this script does is it's basically going to create, in this example, it's a to-dos collection, right? It's using, uh, this little snippet here is really, is really the meat and potatoes of this initial initialization script. And you don't have to have a bootstrap script. You don't have to do anything. It, it could literally be this, this happens on the Fauna DB console, right? It's just they're trying to make things as, as easy as possible in, in their starter kit. Um, so uh, what I want to talk about here is, is, is SQL, and it's, it's Fauna's version of a query language. It's the Fauna query language. Um, the syntax here of creating a, uh, a new document, uh, referencing uh, a class of, of to-dos, uh, creating an index, right? Like, um, this whole syntax here is, is referenced on FaunaDB in their API documentation, um, but that's all that's really happening here, is it's just feeding your database with the name of a collection and the name of an indices, and, and they're, they're completely empty. After that, uh, whatever you add to those things, it will accept, just like Firebase would. It's, it's all document-based, right? Um, so that's all that this is, is doing. So we would run, um, we would run, so we, we would create a bootstrap um, command in our package.json, and we would simply run that command. And it would reference what was in that file, and we would use uh, Netlify dev exec to do it uh, with the knowledge that it is going to ensure that whatever Netlify uh, uh, is aware of will continue to be applied. Cool. Okay. So then, then at that point, uh, we are in the final stretch. We are we are ready to to start creating our, our serverless functions. Uh, and and before we do that, I just want to kind of overview what is the the basic syntax, at least in in Netlify land. What is the basic syntax of a serverless function? And it and it follows this convention of exports.handler. It's, it's a handler export. Um, and in that function, you have, uh, it, it gets passed uh, e event information, context information, and a callback. Um, the, the event object has information about the HTTP request itself, like headers and stuff like that, right? The context has information about the cloud environment where the, uh, the function lives. So in case you need some sort of context from, from that, that cloud environment. And then the callback is gonna be something that uh, is, is executed uh, either on success or on an error. So if if that uh, function fails or if what that function does fails in some way, uh, that, that callback will give us an error message. Uh, if not, it will give us the response, uh, say a, a JSON response um, of, uh, of this successful call. Cool, 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 cool. Um, so, uh, then, so we'll, then, then we're ready to start creating um, uh, functions. Now, you can do this manually, uh, and you can also do this using um, uh, these uh, Netlify uh, commands. Uh, specifically, this is to invoke a command locally via the command line, um, and I can, I can name the specific uh, serverless function that I created, but I also have to specify the port that is being run when I run uh, my, 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 my local function server. Otherwise, it, it won't know what to call, right? So I need to make sure that I specify the port uh, that I called that earlier. And then I can, I can provide also in the command line, I can provide like a sample payload, which is a, you know, a stringified object in this, in this example. Um, so I can test both from the CLI and I can also test uh, my sample to do uh, my, my to do create function here, right? Um, uh, in my in my actual React code. Now, I, I don't want to go dig deep into this because we're not going to absorb it. Let's be honest. Um, but it's basically just you're you're making a connection to the the client using the secret that is pulled from the Netlify production environment into your local environment, right? So you're able to uh, uh, um, uh, authenticate in that way. 
And then um, you can um, basically use that instance to create or to add a new uh, document in your uh, to-dos class or your, your to-dos collection. Uh, and that's really all it's doing. The rest of this is just promise and handling uh, uh, success or, or errors, right? And, and returning appropriate messages and, and status messages. Um, the great thing about this is like you, you could use this example. There are other examples out there, but what I want to call attention to is you can always use, uh, instead of invoke, you can use uh, functions uh, colon create. And what the Netlify CLI gives you the ability to do is it gives you a ton of boilerplate options of serverless functions that you can that you can just invoke that command and it will create it for you. You want you want total uh, uh, CRUD operations. You can use uh, functions invoke and you can select. Hey, I want to create a, a new set of, of CRUD operations uh, of serverless functions. Done. It's going to add it to your your functions folder and you're done. You want to uh, integrate. Uh, Stripe payment function that handles payments. There's a there's a boilerplate for that. You wanna you you wanna um, uh, have a, a sample GraphQL call to your Fauna DB database. Done. You can just invoke the the Netlify functions create command, and those options are already available to you out of the gate, which is super helpful. You don't have to memorize how these are built. Um, it's 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 helping you to to, to leverage this integration directly. Okay. So, um, how do we use our functions in our application? We saw how we could invoke and test our functions locally through the command line using the Netlify CLI. Um, using the actual functions in our app is, is fairly straightforward. We can leverage whatever uh, uh, um, uh, HTTP library we prefer. We can use Axios. This example uses Fetch, right? And we can, we can reference in a very programmatic way exactly what the relative URL of our, our Netlify functions will be. And this behaves, again, the exact same way locally as it would when it is deployed on Netlify, because it's actually literally leveraging uh, the, 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 the Netlify environment at that point in time, right? So in this case, we have a, a util method, uh, util API method called create, and it accepts uh, a data object, right? And all we're doing is we're, we're pinging that HTTP endpoint uh, for our serverless function, and uh, we're just in the body of that request. We are uh, we're just posting that data. That's it. So if you're using hooks, if you're using traditional React, uh, you know class-based components, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can leverage these API methods however you, however you want, however your app, whatever your app calls for, whatever your app needs. And that concludes this talk. So uh, June at Google, uh, this, this is not about Firebase. <laughs> um, so, okay, so, so please, um, please uh, reach out to me if you want. Uh, uh, this is my Twitter handle. Um, uh, if you're a sleuth, you can probably find me in many, in many other ways, uh, but I will leave it at that. Thank you for your time and thank you, Eliza, again, uh, for, for the opportunity to speak and to learn. Appreciate it.